also go ahead and do so. I, I've got a policy. If they're easy questions, I'll take them. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. No problem. Please don't return back to me either. I'd rather not answer any. Um, so the first one is, how will the city mandate that property owners adequately maintain buildings in disrepair or vacant? Well, I, I think we've got a couple of different ways we're doing it. To be truthful with you, some of it is the carrot, some of it is the stick. But the carrot is through things like 269 and making sure that we mandate kind of the character of the building so their development comes and meets the, kind of the criteria and that sort of thing. We actually use that in SUPs and, and that sort of thing so we can do that. Then on the, the stick side, again, not just in development but across the, the city, we have passed some legislation that gives us the ability to much more aggressively go in after dilapidated or vacant buildings. Uh, previously, historically, we couldn't do it unless literally the, the building was going to fall down. There were structural issues and that sort of thing. Now we can go in if we can show that it is simply not contributing to the community. There's a legal process. We'll go through we'll need to protect rights and that sort of thing. But it gives us additional tools to be able to go in. And what we want to do is not so much penalize people, but we really want to push them to do the right thing. In some cases, it may be selling some of these vacant dilapidated so that somebody can come in and do the right thing for the neighbor. In other cases, hopefully it will push people to make investments on, on their own and, and, and do those sorts of things. So I think in some ways we're going to use kind of the tools of the land planning and all those components, and then we'll also use other tools that probably fall more into the law enforcement, but also fall into our ability to do civil litigation. And uh, again, I, I'd say in a lot of areas in this community, we've already had some great success. All right, thank you. Uh, the next question is, what development incentives can the city offer? Uh, I, I think we offer a lot of them, and, and we do it. Those, those have a whole different range to them. Uh, largely, it's going to be on a case-by-case. -case. It clearly depends on the size of it, depends on what's trying to be accomplished. Uh, all of those sorts, sorts of com com components. Uh, in some cases, we can uh, make tax and maintenance available. We've got TIFs, all of those sorts of things. So we're trying to increase kind of the tool bag, so to speak, to be able to utilize. And I think if you look over the course of the, the, the last year, literally from when we came in office to, to today, uh, I think you see us reaching out and trying to uh, work with the community, work with businesses, to try to have some great things happen, not only in Deepville, but in a lot of the neighbors. And again, I, I turn around and say you see some great success. In Jubilee, as an example, we've actually engaged not just the public sector, but the private sector to fund things like cameras that have been very useful in reducing the amount of crime. Uh, private sector getting donations that have come in and taken, in one case, a nightclub that clearly didn't add to the community taking that out and putting a community center in that will be a source of, I think, a lot of pride as well as service for those communities. So those are the sorts of things we've done. And again, they go to last year. We, we made some terrific, terrific progress on those things. Great. I think this one is uh, directed towards the DPD. So if one of you guys would like to come up and answer, or both of you, come up as a team. Yeah, the team's always good. This isn't fair. You guys get a team. <laughs> um, the question I specifically asked is, what is the status of police, car, bike, and walk patrols? Um, it seems that they have decreased over the past year. They, they should not have decreased at all. We, we continue to view DBLM as a priority. We pay officers to work overtime uh, Friday and Saturday nights. And uh, we've worked hard with the community and we've adapted what we've done in response to both uh, uh, criticism, suggestions, and compliments, and, and so our approach to development has changed as far as uh, the way we do things. We've recently opened Main Street back up to two-way traffic on uh, Friday and Saturday nights, uh, and, and, and we're trying to do whatever we need to do, but with our commitment to development and to foot patrols, and we're using new tools to do it. I'd like to make one really brief comment. When I got the job in Arlington, there were a uh, a couple people I worked with in Lake Dean Mellon, and they both independently said, uh, clean it up, but not too much. <laughs> and I, and I, we, we've still sometimes been trying to figure out what that means. So we're, we're very responsive to whatever that means over the uh, coming uh, period of time. Just take 30 seconds and expand a little bit on the beat police and what you're doing for the city and how that's going to Yes, uh, what we're trying to do, and this is probably less of an impact on deep element because I think we've already had, we've always had a good working relationship between our officers and supervisors and the community leaders in development. What we're trying to do is just make sure every piece of geography in the city is owned by an officer and, and that we're connected with the stakeholders so that we can work with them to address community concerns and respond uh, both with our crime strategies and other ways to create uh, Safe neighborhood. The city council just passed Wednesday 
a new ordinance dealing with the issue of metal thefts, and I think that will make a big difference in Deep Ellum. We uh, already have seen less foot traffic uh, in a salvage yard that probably most impacts this particular community, and so I think we're going to see some significant results quickly with that ordinance. And if I could real quickly, you know, we're talking about beat ownership. Can I introduce Sergeant David Conley? A lot of you know him. And that's <laughs> Some businesses that be truthful with you need more traffic and need more opportunities. 